Now, the very mention of snoring tends to send many of us into a fit of giggles. On its own, it doesn't cause any real physical harm to the snorer, but it's far from a joke to those who have to put up with it. If you're the partner who's somebody who snores, then uh, you are probably going to have uh, the typical features which are disturbed nights, irritability, and uh, some people who phone me on the helpline have said, um, I get paranoid about lying there waiting for him to start snoring, or waiting for her to start snoring. So how bad can the social consequences be then? Uh, well, they can, they can lead to divorce in, in some very extreme instances. Uh, but it's quite frequent to have couples who sleep apart, sometimes for many years, because they have thought that snoring is a problem which is incurable. The Slumberland Sleep Laboratory at Manchester's Withenshaw Hospital is the regional centre for the study of breathing problems during sleep. Its staff can monitor a patient during an overnight stay, assess their particular problem and suggest the most suitable treatment. Snoring is a multifactorial problem, that means there's lots of factors. And the, the risk factors include a small jaw, a blocked nose, uh, being fat, that's a big problem particularly neck obesity, so people with large collar size. I, I forgot, being male is very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, males do it much more than females. And alcohol is another big risk factor. We all know that if you have a skin fall one night, you'll snore much more loudly. And so we ask the patients who, who do snore to avoid alcohol. So that's, there are a number of factors, and so that means that treating any one particular factor is unlikely to, to cure snoring on its own. We have to take a broad front approach. We have to tackle a number of factors to, to help people. There's no miracle cure for snoring, and treatments can range from simple gadgets through to complicated surgery. However, for some sufferers, snoring can be just one symptom of a more serious condition. In sleep apnea, what happens is that when you breathe in at night, when you're asleep, you choke. I'll try and do it for you if you like. It's <laughs> that sort of thing. Uh, the apnea lasts maybe 30 seconds or a minute. And because of that, it disrupts your sleep. So the two symptoms are that you, you snore very loudly, and secondly, uh, you fall asleep in the day because your quality of sleep at night is so poor. Raymond Massey has suffered from sleep apnea for 17 years. The condition disrupted both his work and social life, but is now kept under control with the aid of this machine. It provides a continuous flow of air, preventing his throat from collapsing during sleep. Sleep apnea prevents you from getting into deep sleep, and you only get a very shallow sleep, with the result that you wake up tired in the morning, not having had a full night's sleep. So, um, seven, eight, nine hours sleep uh, with apnea leaves you waking up very tired um, with the machine, the CPAP machine, uh, six hours sleep, and bright as a button. It's a bit of a nuisance, but uh, the benefits are, are great, you know. Both snoring and sleep apnea, they're very private problems. Why is it important to raise public awareness about them? Because, it, simply because it is a problem which we tend to keep rather under wraps. It's, it's very embarrassing for some people to talk about it. Um, so consequently, it's difficult for them to discuss it, even with their GP. Mm. So we feel that it's something that, w that we should let everybody know about. And uh, principally, we should let them know that it's something that they can deal with. You don't have to put up with suffering from sleep apnea or any form of snoring. There's plenty of help available for both you and your partner. Why not write to us for our free information pack? We're at Granada Action, P.O. Box 166, Manchester M1 2AQ. That's P.O. Box 166, Manchester M1 2AQ.